This is Barry Johnson from Solar Twin introducing the new Solar Twin Zero Carbon Controller, which promises to make the whole of the solar heating industry zero carbon. It gets rid of the approximately 20% carbon clawback that goes with using mains powered pumps in solar panels and thereby improves the carbon footprint of solar heating systems by replacing a piece of wire and a power station with a PV panel, a solar controller and a dedicated pump. There it is. This is what you get. A solar controller, one solar panel sensor with a long cable, there's the sensor, two sensors for the hot water cylinder, one for the top, one for the bottom, three clips to put on the sensors if you need them. Now let's look at what's inside the controller. Five connections, two for power, three for sensors. Panel, top of cylinder, bottom of cylinder, power in from the PV, power out to the power. Reset button, programming buttons which you will not usually need to use. The two supercapacitors which hold energy so the system will work overnight. Here's a photovoltaic panel which you could use for powering your solar controller. It doesn't come with your controller, but if you buy a solar twin system it does. Connecting the photovoltaic. Connecting the cable that goes to the pump. Make sure there are no loose strands of the cable that could make short circuits. Connect your sensors. Well pushed in. As soon as you plug in the PV, the solar controller starts charging up. The display will change after a while from being blank to showing LP and a spanner. LP means low power. When it charges further, it will show the temperature of the top of the cylinder. That's provided you've got your sensors plugged in. If your sensors are not plugged in, you'll probably see something like this. There's an error and an open circuit. An open circuit means that the sensor is not plugged in. ER with an S in an error with a short circuit. Okay. Once you have your sensors installed, it's worth checking they are all reading the right temperature. This is the normal display showing the top of the cylinder. But by pressing the three plus, minus and OK buttons, you can show all three temperatures. Hold it down for 30 seconds. The display will change. You can always go back to one temperature by pressing the reset button. Here's what happens when it gets hotter in the panel. Here are the existing temperatures. Panel, top of cylinder, bottom of cylinder. Here's a partly disassembled pump connected to the controller with the PV in the sun as well. I've taken the back off. Please don't do this yourself. I'm putting a mark on it so you can see if it starts to rotate. Here is the panel sensor and I'm beginning to warm it up now with my hand. The pump starts. The arrow points inward. The system is importing heat. Every 30 seconds the temperatures update themselves. You have set up your zero carbon controller. Simply press the reset button to get back to one temperature. Leave your controller like that, just showing one temperature, because for safety reasons it's important to be able to know what temperature the top of the cylinder is and not to have any risk of confusion between panel, top of cylinder and bottom. So how do you actually install the three sensors, one on the panel and two on the cylinder? The panel sensor must sense the water temperature as close as possible. So the best place to put it is actually through the insulation at the back. You don't poke it through, you cut a hole in the insulation. It should be 900 millimeters away from the side of the panel which the hot pipe exits. It should start 100 millimeters down from the top and finish 120 millimeters down. 70 millimeters left to right and 20 millimeters up and down which you cut out of the insulation. Take that insulation out and keep it. Put on the clip in the middle like this. Place the sensor in behind the back. Insert it so that it is in touch, top to bottom, and along here, with the metal at the back of the panel. If there is silicone glue or anything like that, scrape it off carefully. Then reinsert the insulation you cut out. You route the cable coming downwards out of the, the, the hole that you've done. If it's coming from the top, you could get water drip entry 
and then seal over the hole very carefully and secure your cable. That will give you a secure connection, thermally and physically, to the top row of pipe at the panel. How do you connect your sensors to the cylinder? You don't want to sense the wrong thing. You don't measure above or below where a pipe goes in. Temperature differences could cause warm water to rise from where that pipe goes in, if it was a hot pipe, or cool water to flow downwards. Sensing the temperatures directly above or below where a pipe goes in could give you the wrong reading. So make sure where you sense your temperatures around the, the cylinder in a circular direction that you don't have them above or below where a pipe is. Your sensor should be to the side, at least 70 millimeters to the side. The top sensor goes on the seam between the cylinder and the dome. Take off a rectangle of insulation using a blunt pointed knife, 70 millimeters left to right, 20 millimeters up and down. Insert the sensor so that it is in contact along its length with the metal of that seam. Reinsert the insulation in the same orientation that you took it out, then tape over that, tape the cable to the cylinder. Where do you fit the lower sensor? 20 to 40 millimetres above the height of the midpoint of the cold pipe that leads to the panel. And at least 70 millimetres to the side of it. Again, you cut a horizontal hole 20 to 70 millimetres, take the insulation out, insert the sensor, replace the insulation in the same orientation as you took it out, and then seal it completely up with, with aluminium tape. Make sure that the cables for the sensors cannot come loose. This must be a foolproof installation. I hope this was interesting and that the zero carbon controller is the thing for you. Thank you. From Barry Johnson at Solar Twin.